Hey guys, in this video I'm going to present a tutorial on restuffing vintage paper capacitors. This type, the type that are a roll of paper and metal film inserted into a cardboard tube and then sealed with wax. That's a somewhat controversial topic. Is it worth the effort? Who's ever going to see it? Who cares? Why bother? Well, it definitely seems to be more popular in the radio community than the TV community. And I can understand why. Uh, for no other reason, there are fewer capacitors in a radio than a TV, typically. Uh, technology was constantly evolving in the 20s and 30s, so there's a lot of different capacitor types. Some of them kind of interesting looking. Uh, and it presents a challenge. Some, uh, some caps are in Bakelite or metal or cardboard, and just, it's a challenge to hide the new parts inside of the old parts so it looks like no one was ever in there before. So I think that's the appeal to, to some of the hobbyists out there. Now there are certainly some TVs that I would argue are very much worthy of the extra effort. For example, a pre-World War II TV. They're quite rare. If, it should be if it's going to be restored at all, which is another <laughs> topic altogether, I would certainly argue they should be restuffed. And early post-war TVs are often filled with paper caps that are rather easy to restuff. Later they get into bumblebee caps and other types that are encapsulated in plastic or ceramic that are quite hard to restuff. But a TV like this one, these came out of a Motorola VT73 from 49, is a really great um, opportunity to give it a try. This was 100% original. All the paper, original paper caps were present and they all have a very nice Motorola logo on them. So I thought it was worthy of the effort. I also wanted to try out uh, some new ideas. Some I got from viewers, some, uh, one or two I thought of on my own, and I've been doing some experimenting behind the scenes, and I wanted to present you with my latest technique that I think is relatively quick and easy and produces good results. So let's get started. My cork assortment off of Amazon has arrived, so let's go through and do another one of these from start to finish. This is another one of the high voltage. It's a .005, 6,000. The only part of this process that I'm still tinkering with ideas is actually getting the old cap out of the tube. After that I've got things pretty well streamlined. I'll dig out the new cap I'm going to be putting in there. Get these from Just Radios. I'll uh, include some links where you can buy these. There aren't uh, very many sources for high voltage caps unfortunately, but uh, at least there's one, <laughs> thank goodness. Okay, so to get these apart, in the past I've used a heat gun to melt off the outside wax and then to heat up the ends and get out that wax, which is a higher temperature type of material. However, that's messy and gooey. And, uh, I've been trying something dif different this time around and I've been freezing them. So this just came out of the freezer. And uh, I'm going to start with getting the inside out. And what I've been doing for that is actually removing material from the outside. And so instead of using heat, I'm doing it mechanically. The stuff is pretty brittle. Once you break it up a bit, uh, I should be able uh, to just push the inside out. Get the old cap out. Be careful not to stab yourself. So the outer coating here, this is beeswax. Nothing toxic, no big deal, it's just beeswax. And even though it's frozen, it's still... <laughs> uh, these high voltage caps tend to be especially gooey, so I'm going to get a paper towel on there. Oh my God, this end is breaking apart better. And it's not that deep, at least not with these high voltage caps. It's only like an eighth of an inch, maybe a quarter inch of this material. I 
idea is once I chip enough of this away, I can take a, a nut driver like this and just push on it and the insides will just come right out. I've been getting more and more comments about using power tools, whether it's to remove rivets or maybe to aid in this process and, or even taking stuff apart. I'm not a big fan of power tools when it comes to working on antiques. I also tend to work at night and I just don't want to make a lot of noise in the house. But I don't like things like Dremel tools and that. There's one slip and you can really do some damage. <laughs> and uh, bits of metal debris go everywhere and get the tube socket pins and such even the heat gun not crazy about using and uh, honestly I just find it a little more relaxing to do things with hand tools Seems like whenever I record this process, I get a stubborn one. Usually they go a little bit faster than this. Mm, give this a try. Oh, well, not work quite yet. Alright, well, I'm going to keep chipping away. In particular, I want to get it when it comes up against the cardboard. It, it tends to, to separate pretty, there we go. Pretty easily, that's what I'm trying to get at where there's really not much holding it in. Okay. I'll take a bit of chip away this one a little more. Now later caps, they started using more and more um, stronger methods of sealing the end, like epoxy, and or the, there's a dura mold type. Uh, those are really, really tough to get apart without destroying the capacitor. Their thinking was that, hey, if we seal, yeah, this is ready to go. If we seal the environment, then uh, the moisture can get in, and the caps will last much longer. The reality is that the type of paper they used contained acid apparently or other impurities and <laughs> they degraded uh, regardless of uh, the environment. So that's why these are essentially always bad. Now for the outer wax, uh, that I've been experimenting with too. This one is especially gooey for some reason. Others um, when they're frozen, this becomes very brittle and it just flakes off. But this, I think, not so much. Alright, so that's why I pulled out a heat gun. However, I don't want to get this completely liquid to where it's just running off. I want to get it soft, and you'll see it kind of sloughs off in chunks. You don't need to get it crazy hot. And I got this on low, I'm not going to burn my hand or anything. It's Get that warm. Let's see, it just it comes off the cardboard very easily in large bits. I do tend to go through a lot of paper towels. Overall, 
I think this is a lot better than totally liquefying the wax and letting it run off. Okay, there we go. That's it. Now, now the fun bit with the corks. So we want to put this cap inside this tube. Obviously the new cap is smaller. Uh, I've tried a bunch of techniques from wrapping electrical tape around it to uh, stuffing wadding in the end like paper towels and then sealing the end with uh, hot glue. Well, I got into my head that maybe there'd be a better, simpler way. and uh, I started playing around with corks. Now the inside diameter of this is three quarters of an inch. So we want to find a cork that is three quarters of an inch for the outer diameter. This is going to be too small. Yep, a little bit bigger. These guys. Now this is a standard cork size, three quarters. Yeah, I think. Yeah, that'll work. All right. So now the other issue is if I were to take two corks. It's, they're too big. <laughs> There's not going to be enough room left for the cap if I was to stick these in. So I just simply cut them down. I'll cut it down to maybe an eighth of an inch thick. This stuff's very easy to cut. After all, there is one. And once I figured out a technique, I could uh, just go through and prepare a whole bunch of these in advance. So that's going to plug up the end. Now we just need to poke a little hole through it. So we can feed our lead down through it. Again, it's cork, don't need power tools or anything, just push it a little bit right through it. Okay, uh, one end of this still needs a little bit of cleanup. Out. Okay. So let's put one end through here and we'll just stick it in the end of the cap and push it down a bit. And then I'll do the other end. And there we go. <laughs> now, I suppose you could just leave it at this, but we're going to go a little bit further and we're going to use some hot glue, dark brown glue sticks. So I'm going to snug these in as far as I can get them. Okay. Brown hot glue, mini sticks. It's super cheap. You can get them in a rainbow of colors off of Amazon or. Joint fabrics, I imagine, Michaels. Put the hot tip up against the outer edge and go around. I'm using the mini sticks, so I find this tip easier to get into small spaces, but it also means you do go through a bit of glue. One stick is good from two, maybe three caps. But these sticks are cheap. I don't know. 20 sticks for five bucks or something like that. Uh, am I gonna have enough? Uh, I think I grab another stick. I'm just kind of smoothing it out. So if things get a little messy, a little sloppy, you can reflow this with a heat gun or 
uh, heat up a blade, a butter knife or something, or even the same utility knife I just used to cut up the cork and smooth it out. I'll let this set up a bit and then I'll show you how that goes. Generally though you can sort of run this around and get the words not too bad, but I can do a little bit better than that, so keep going. Sometimes I'm able to just do this and just reflow it a little. If you really want it to get it. And then you can go over and smooth that. That looks good enough. Just clean the boogers off on the edge. So on this side. Alright, now the final step is going to be to seal the whole thing with some wipe on satin polyurethane. Okay. That'll do. That'll do. Alright, for the final step, wipe on poly satin. It will help protect the cardboard from now that it's exposed to the environment because I took the wax off of it and uh, it makes it look nicer. These are some I did a couple days ago. They've already completely set up. You'll see this will pop a bit. When I apply it, I'm just using these uh, sort of cotton swabs on a long stick. This is oil-based poly, so it does take a good 24 hours or longer to set up. Just wipe it all over. I'm going to get the ends as well. And I stick them in a block of styrofoam while I cure up. So I've just been slowly doing this. I take a break from other projects and do another one or two of these and then set them aside. When they're all done, I'll pull the uh, moto chassis back out and install them all. And once it's coated, I'll bend the leads over. These are nice long leads. Stick it in the foam and we'll let it set up. So that's it. As always, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm curious to hear your thoughts and opinions. I know this isn't for everybody, so maybe you're going to say it's a waste of time or it's silly, but uh, I think it's an interesting process and fun to do every now and then for special projects.